Thank you very much, Larry. We are here on a beautiful afternoon for football. Coming up, a rematch of last year's AFC Championship game between the New England Patriots and the Denver Broncos. This one fielded at the five. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Devontae Booker. And he's going to be stopped here on this first play as he gets it to the line of scrimmage and no more. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. his blockers to get this up over the 40. A good run as he works his way for nine that time, and it'll leave him with a third and just a few inches. The ground game, Charles, is really where the Broncos need to get things going. Devontae Booker, three carries, just one yard in week 14. They got Justin Forrest for a touchback. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They come out here in the eye. Now a first carry for LeGarrette Blunt. And this defense feeling the encouragement. They stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, they're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things <laughs> out. Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent. Not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. To the left side and complete for Julian Edelman. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. When you decide to run a hitch route, it really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. Throwing is Brady on third down. This is White on the screen. Oh, he shifts past him. And he is out of bounds, getting it across the 30-yard line. The 12 yards that time and picking up the first. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Going on first down is Brady. He finds Malcolm Mitchell here. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a Not just a big, big man, big, a huge big, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> he was looking for Julian Edelman that time. And it's third down. So a ways to go here on third and ten. Shotgun now for Brady. It'll have his man. That's Edelman. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. The former seventh round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Patriots in possession to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move as they face a second down here. Brady to throw on second down. And complete on the right side to Bennett. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And this is going to be incomplete. The wideout, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. And fourth down coming up. Goskowski now for the Pats field goal try. Right hash mark of 42 yard attempt. And the 10 year vet knocks it through the goal post. And the Patriots jump out to a 3 0 lead. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. And Denver getting set to take the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A one-yard gain can look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, Hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. Come back and get them the next time. All right, here we go. Blue Niner. On second down, here's Simeon. He's got time. nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Throwing on third down, Simeon. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. Returnable here from the 38. 33 yards is the distance on the punt there. And the Patriots take over. 
Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had a field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. And this will be caught at the 30. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. I've got to make sure that I don't take Tom Brady's greatness for granted, that we make it routine. How about that throw right there? Yeah. Another, another great completion. And you know one area where he honed his throwing? He was a catcher in high school. He was actually drafted by the Expos in 1995 in the 18th round. Well, that would have been something to see him behind the dish. I think he gunned down a few guys. Gunned down a few guys trying to steal second. That would have been fun to watch. Down to the 25. Three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Now it's second and seven. To throw, it's Brady. And caught. This is Bennett, the tight end. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Have we yet met a receiver that wasn't excited about getting a chance to play with Tom Brady? Absolutely not. And Martellus right. Bennett bringing his considerable skills to New England now. Going to hook up with Mr. Brady for another completion here. Yeah, 90 catches a couple years ago in Chicago. 53 last year for Bennett. That's caught at the three. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Malcolm Mitchell from 10 yards out. And the Patriots add six to their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul-searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots, but what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Here we go now. Right. Simeon on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Okay, well, we have a second here. Let's talk NFC playoff picture. If it ended today, Cowboys, Lions would have the bye, then the Bucks, Giants, Seahawks, and Falcons all would be in. And let's break it down just a little bit farther. Let's talk about the NFC East, which looked like an absolute lock for Dallas, and it might still be, but the Giants are still there. Remember, they own the tiebreaker over the Cowboys if they finish in a tie. And in the NFC South, Atlanta and Tampa Bay are going to come down to the wire. Neck and neck, both eight and five. Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight 
Now we're going to get a timeout here called by the Patriots. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for Denver. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That's pulled in at the 32. A nice job on the return there, 16 yards. And possession will switch, hands first and 10. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. Well, here in the booth, we have a playoff picture if it ended today, and I'm looking at the AFC to take a quick pivot. The Patriots, Chiefs, Raiders all looking very good past that. A lot of shuffling still could be done. Well, let's face it. The AFC East has been locked down for a lot of years, so we know how that's going to turn out. <laughs> but let's head out west because Oakland and Kansas City are tied at 10-3, and but Kansas City swept the season series, so they have the ultimate tiebreaker right there. And the AFC South, the records may not be pretty, but it's snug there. Houston, Tennessee both tied, and Indianapolis just one game back. I know they don't like to hear it when they get to a certain age, but then you have to start to use your, your skills, your wiles, right, your mind to beat guys to the football, and getting your toes tapped in bounds definitely qualifies as that, doesn't yeah, it? The veteran showing he still has the agility. From midfield, here's Brady. And he will find his man. That's Hogan complete. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. First down. Looking sideline incomplete. The former Bill, Chris Hogan, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. He'll try again on second down. To the right side, it's caught by Mitchell. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just extra Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. 
I think when they get back in the huddle, the question will be, why did you throw that one? The coverage was incredible all over him. The only thing he didn't do after he caught the ball as a defender was get his feet in bounds. That should have been a turnover. Blunt, the lone running back. Now Brady again. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Martellus Bennett in the final seconds of the first half. And the Patriots add on to their lead. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. He's got it and it's 17-0. Koskowski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away that's fielded in the end zone and not wanting to risk anything here late in the half he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25 here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here and from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it and I think in this situation that's the proper play but we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So at halftime, it's the Patriots with the advantage. As we send you on down to our studios in Orlando, where standing by is Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Throwing on first down is Brady. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Charles, a lot of off-air talk between us about the playoff picture, and obviously Patriots well on their way there again, but they'll have to do it this year without Rob Gronkowski. Of course, the Madden cover boy injured. Maybe some talk of a Madden curse, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, it's so funny when we talk about that. If you go back through the time, a lot of guys had big years after being on the cover of Madden. You know, I know Richard Sherman, Richard and, Sherman. And, the, and the Seahawks went to a Super Bowl yep. the year yep. that he was on there. OBJ had a good year last year. Yeah, so I, listen, you and I both know Gronk. There's no way he sees it as a curse. He sees it as a challenge and will work his way back. <laughs> and we certainly wish him well in his recovery. Now to Blunt. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Partner, I think the easy thing now would be to just abandon the run and start throwing the football at all costs. But I've been in so many games where it doesn't work running the ball. It doesn't work running the ball. And then something pops. And now you get something going. I'm not so sure to just abandon your game plan this early in the second half. Brady to throw on second down. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. That one goes for 24 yards. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. They go play action here on first down. He's got time. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. 
But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Brady again here on second and ten. And over the middle to the tight end, Bennett. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Throwing is Brady on third down. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Now Blunt. And he's got this one down to the 10. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Now Brady throwing on second down. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude. But I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. And the Broncos go to a nickel set on third down. Yeah, they've got an extra DB out there. And that is incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And that brings up fourth down. Well, sometimes you just have to take things into your own hands, don't you? I mean, the offense is really struggling in this game. They're the ones keeping things going. They have to continue to play at that level. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And Goskowski's kick is good. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. So a good kick there, and they finish off the drive with three. And that should be the goal for an offense, finish each drive with points. So that's a nice job there to come away with at least something. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This one taken from the seven. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Two Patriots there to bring him down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Here we go now. Boom, line it. Off the fake to Booker and Simeon. And hold in here by Jordan Norwood. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. Booker on first down. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. It's a gain of three on what will be the final play of this third quarter. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 30. 
On second down, here's Simeon. His throw incomplete. Emmanuel Sanders, the intended receiver. And that'll make it third down. The Patriots going with a dime package here. Two extra defensive backs on third. Throwing on third down, Simeon. And this is going to be incomplete. Demarius Thomas, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down. A critical one here if they're going to have any shot at this thing. So they'll go for it on fourth down. Desperation time for Simeon on fourth. Finding time. And it is incomplete. Gary Kubiak's guys denied on fourth down. And the Patriots defense is going to take over on down. And now out come the Patriots. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three points. The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. And that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe <laughs> Super toe. A couple of Broncos there in on the tackle. And in this situation with a lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. Darian Stewart there to bring him down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They all has that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, the free safety was there, no gain. Over the middle, the catch made by Mitchell. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. This is caught. It's Julian Edelman. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Well, it all came together on that one, didn't it? Big time throw on fourth. Now that had to feel good, didn't it? Taking that type of a gamble there and making it pay off. What a throw. And tough as a receiver because no matter how perfect the pass, you know it's fourth down and you got to convert. A little bit of extra pressure, but he overcame it. They'll run it here with Blunt. Whoosh. 13 yards there on the pickup, and it gives the Pats a first down. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why there are points up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control, and we can do whatever we feel like doing out here on the field. They'll run again with Blunt. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And here comes play number six on this drive. And the hard count got the defense there, encroachment, and the five-yard penalty. Right. 
three yards to go on second down. Here's Blunt. <laughs> And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. The safety, T.J. Ward, in on the stop. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Brady going to try and throw on third down. He's got a man. It's Mitchell. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Brady going to look to throw. Surveying the field. This will be caught at about the six. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. Well, Charles, stepping back from this one a moment, no matter who's on the field, it's always tough to come in here and beat a team that's the defending champs, but they were able to get it done. Weren't they 10-0 overall in this yeah, stadium? Yeah, you include the playoffs, 8-0 regular season. Yeah, I mean, that's really fantastic. And you're not just beating them. You're beating a crowd that's always behind their team, and you're beating altitude as well. That's a big victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everyone.